Okay, let's get this thing started. So today's session, we're going to cover the um, the watch list column that we have created and shared um, a couple of weeks back. It's called KGF. And uh, we're going to look at that um, watch list column, uh, what it does, how to plot it, and uh, how to use it. So there are two versions of it. One is KGF and one is KGF Lite. So we're just going to look at both and see what um, they're going to do and then how they're going to operate and how you can use them for your uh, benefit if you're interested and then uh, mon how, how you can monitor it right so let's get started so um, there is the script that I have shared in the group in the options group I don't think I've shared it in the actual group but then if anyone is interested in um, um, you know having this it, it works for both options and stocks um, if you are day trading, this is purely day trading. This is um, this is not really for any swing trading or long term holding. This is purely day trading. You enter in the morning and you exit in the night, um, in the evening, right? So um, this is the original version. This is KGF, which was uh, shared in the group options group, and then um, the script is there. This is the script I just copy pasted in this text file. So let's look. I don't want to explain the script itself because uh, I don't think we want to look at that. Um, this is not a session to explain how to code. This is a session to explain how it works, actually. So let's look at the um, basis of how it works. So um, when we plot KGF on the watch list column, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes, what it does is it basically displays whether you can buy calls, on a particular ticker or whether you can buy puts on a particular ticker or whether you should just listen to songs or what is, what this means is just don't do anything, right? So um, when, when you're looking at stocks itself, like when you're not trading options, calls means buy a stock, puts means uh, short a stock, um, listen to songs is universal, you just listen to songs. So what are the things that this um, KGF original version is gonna look at, right? So number one, it's gonna look at the opening range high of the first five minutes. Um, and then it's gonna check if the price is above the first five minutes or not. And then I'll show you in, in the graph um, in detail everything. And then the second point, it's gonna check if the 100 exponential moving average is above the 200 exponential moving average. That means the stock is in a good strong trend. And the third option, the third thing that it checks is if the SPY, which indicates the market, is um, trending upwards, which means if the 100 exponential moving average is above 200 exponential moving average on a five minute chart. If you guys have questions on what is an exponential moving average, what is an ORB, I would suggest you to go back um, to the first training session that was recorded and is available on the YouTube channel, uh, Things Have Your YouTube channel, and see what it means. Because since it's just one hour session, I want to keep keep it um, short, crispy, and to the point for KGF, right? And what does puts do, right? Puts will do the same thing um, in an inverse. Like it will check the first five minute opening range and check if the price is under the first opening of the five minute. And then it checks if the 100 exponential moving average is below the 200 exponential moving average on a five minute chart. And then if the 100 exponential moving average of SPY is below the 200 exponential moving average um, on a five minute chart. And if none of these conditions are met, it will simply display listen to songs. You can listen to songs if you like, or you can just, um, just do something else if you don't like songs because I was told by a few guys that they don't want those little ones, which is fine. Now, how do we plot this KGF indicator on um, Think or Swim as a watch list column, right? Now, I have present pasted this script in the chat. So all you have to do is Control A, Control C. So you copied it. And then in Think or Swim, you have a um, few tabs here. So you go to market watch and then you should have, um, you know, uh, some tickers here. Uh, you can give whatever you like. Um, let's just say Apple, 
you should be able you should you should have the list of stocks that you want to trade like let's say ttd um let's say msft i'll add one more am cm for example right so you should have a list of stocks that you want to trade to actually make this work right so i'm not going to tell you how to get this list of stocks you have to know these list of stocks based on your criteria like you scan for something or you find someone posting something in the chat or you look at the things have your reports and you come up with a ticker and you just want to day trade it right for whatever reason so you will have to add that ticker here um, in the market watch under quotes and then you can save that watch list um, if you want create a watch list and then you can add all of these here and then once you have few tickers here what you have to do is at the end there is this gear icon here you click on it and then you click customize and then you have a um, set of mark like the watch list columns and here in the search you should type custom and then you will get a bunch of custom um, names here like custom one custom two till i think you will get till custom 20 i'm not getting anything because i've used all 20. so here i have uh, renamed one um, for you guys as custom one so let's see what we have to do here is once you type custom you'll get the custom uh, uh, watch list columns that you can customize you have to click on this right here this um, editor symbol and uh, let's see where is this uh, editor okay so i got this editor as you click this you will basically get the pop-up window like this right so you name this as kgf and then you make sure the time frame here is five minutes and then you uncheck the extended trading session um in the past we have been using this as checked but as i'm doing some back testing more aggressively i figured out that it works best if you just don't have the extended hours uh, trading session checked. So just leave it unchecked. So you can name it as KGF, make the time as five minutes. If you click here, you'll get many time frames. Make sure you select five minutes, uncheck this. So I'm removing this and I got this control A, control C, I copied it. I pasted it and then I click apply. I click okay. And then I select it and move it from the left to the right by clicking on add items. And then just uh, move it up to the price next to the price and then click okay, All right? So it's showing listen to songs for most of these um, cause it's after hours. This is purely day trading. And then this does not work properly during after hours. So we have unchecked the after hours here. Um, so it doesn't really calculate much um, during after hours. So you have to be in the trading session and you will get signals from the sixth minute uh, of the trading session, right? And let's just see what it does, right? So you have a bunch of columns here. For the most part, you, you, you see listen to songs and you have listen to pulse, right? So, let's see on the actual chart how it is checking and what it is checking right so i'm gonna have two grids here uh, and i'm going to have spy and then i'm gonna have it as five day five minutes i'm gonna remove it all and then here I'm going to look at, let's just say, Apple, for example, right? And then I'm going to look at five to five minutes. Okay, so let's look at the criteria here. What is it going to look at, right? The stock price should be above the five minute ORB high, right? So we need to plot ORB, which um, we have shared many, many, many times uh, in the group chat here. You all probably know what is ORB. I'm actually doing it from scratch, so you know what all I'm doing, right? So I just remove the FIB extensions. I don't want the FIB extensions here. 
Okay, so I have set the ORB, the opening range break from um, 9.30 to 9.35, which is the first five minutes. So I will have the opening range um, plotted on all the days, right? So we can look at some examples. Since we are not looking at the extended hours, I will also remove the extended hours for the sake of the argument here. I'll also remove it. Removing the extended hours here. Okay, so now what is the second condition? So the first condition is that the stock itself should be above or below the opening range break, right? So we have some range forming here, right? And this is the first five minutes. You can do it for 30 minutes. You can do it for 15 minutes. You can do whatever range you wanna look at. I personally like five minutes and 30 minutes. So the script also is um, uh, written around five minutes. I'll show you how to change it from five minutes to 30 minutes if you guys are interested. So this is the opening range break. And then the second condition, let's look at the second condition before I plot anything. The 100 exponential moving average should be above 200 exponential moving average, right? So let's plot exponential moving average. Moving average exponential. Add once, add twice. Click on settings. Click 100. I'm gonna change it to white and then width to two, just for the visibility. And then the second exponential moving average is 200. I'm gonna change it to red, if that's red. So I have opening range from um, 930 to 935, five minute opening range, and then the exponential moving average 100 and 200, right? So I click apply here. Um, so we have something. And we wanna look at the final condition here is a spy 100 exponential moving average should be above uh, 200 exponential moving average. So for us to see what that is, we have to plot exponential moving average for spy as well. 100, next white. And then why is it 100 and 200 is um, during some back testing, what what I have personally noticed is that when the 100 is above or below uh, the exponential moving average, uh, 200 exponential moving average, the trend appears to be um, really good, right? So let's let's just see if uh, we would have got any signals on um, Apple, for example, right, in the last few days, right? So let me see if I can move it from this. To ten day five minute, ten day five minutes, ten day five minutes. Okay, so let's look at this, right? So the condition should be. Um, give me a second. I'll make it two. The white for calls. We'll just look at calls now. For calls, the condition should be the white should be above red on both the charts and the price should be above this opening range uh, for the first five minutes, right? Simple, white should be above red on both the charts and the price should be above the opening range um, high. So that's the condition. So if we are trading this for the last 10 days on a five minute chart, let's see how many uh, times we would have got calls and how many times we would have uh, been told to just do nothing and or how many times we would have been told puts, right? So let's look at calls, for example. So here on this day, uh, so the white is 100 exponential moving and the red is 200, right? So the white is under red till here. So we will not be taking calls because the SPY is in a downtrend, though it is actually going up. The long-term trend is actually downside. Even for Apple till morning, somewhere around 9.40, it is down. So we did not, we will not take any trade on that day. If we wanna take a trade, 
exactly at 12.35, KGF would have displayed as calls, then we can trade it um, if we think the time is sufficient. If it was me, I will not trade um, at around 12.25. It's too late for me to actually take a trade. So I will not take a trade. So let's look at the next day, right? The 100 is above 200, so the SPY is bullish. 100 is above 200, so Apple itself is bullish. So the stock is above, if you look at this day, the stock actually broke above the ORB opening range break, and then um, it never broke the opening range break, but it did not make a massive move. So while we would have been in the trade, more or less this day would have been a break even trade, right? Uh, we would have not made much maybe, right? On this particular day, uh, or maybe few, few, like maybe 3%, 2%, something if you can actually hold here. So um, we will talk about stop loss or trailing stop loss in a second, but I just wanna get you understand the, the concept of this, right? So let's look at this date, right? This is what the 12.8. So on 12.8, when the market is open, 100 is above 200, so the trend is bullish. 100 is above 200, so the trend on Apple is bullish. And then you enter the calls here, where the range is here. You will get on the on the sixth minute, on the sixth, not sixth minute, in this case, uh, at around 8.40 Central or 9.40 Eastern, you will get a signal on market watch next to Apple. It says calls. On 12.8, if you are using KGF, at around 9.40 Eastern, 8.40 Central, you will get a sip, like you'll get a message calls. What that means is the 100 is about 200 on the chat, 100 is about 200 on the SPY, the, the stock is breaking. So you would have probably entered at 172. If you were trading all the way, you would have traded on, until 175, the high being 175, 86 something. So you would have made some good 20% something um, easily. And then on this day, for example, let's look at this day, the next day. This is what, ninth, right? So the next day, you will, you the, the SPY is above, uh, the 100 is above 200. So SPY is bullish, Apple is bullish, but you will not get a trigger to buy calls on this day. Why? Because look, the price never crossed or be high. See, if you look at the conditions, the first condition is the stock price should be above the first five minute or be high. Did it cross the or be high? No, the candle did not close above the or be high. So what it would have told us is it would have just told us to listen to songs here like this. So we will not trade Apple. Why? Well, the long-term trend is actually bullish on both SPY and both Apple, but the price is telling me otherwise. Why will I trade it? No, I will not trade it, right? So what KGF original do does is like it basically tracks the long-term trend of the SPY, and then it also tracks the long-term trend of the stock, and then it also tracks the price action. So this is the day if you really wanted to trade Apple, because the previous day it made a massive move, you wanted to basically trade Apple on this day, but then you would have been told by KGF like, no, don't do it because the, the price action is not in your favor. So this is the day you would have really saved your capital. And this is the whole reason for me to build KGF, for, he, for, for us to be able to take a decision based on the long-term trend, based on the price action and also the long-term trend of the, on, on the market index, right? The, the market itself is spy, right? So we wanna look at all three things in one single view and then take a decision, right? Let's look at the next day, right? So this is 12.10, right? So let's see what we would have done. Okay, so 12.10, uh, this is 12.10, right? So, right, the 100 is above 200 and then 100 is above 200. So, the first candle above, so around the sixth minute in the day, you would have told, you would have got a signal to buy calls, right? You have got signal to buy calls. And now we will talk about the stop loss here. 
my stop loss will always be if i am aggressive my stop loss will be the same point where i enter if i am little conservative this is my stop loss the opening range low is going to be my stop loss for 70% of the time 70% of my trading i i treat this as my um stop loss there are some exceptions then i trade like highly volatile stocks um i sometimes move my stop so but i would encourage you guys to give some room and then keep this as your stop loss always right so the 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 the, the stock broke this and then it never broke the opening range low when i say breaking it means that body of the candle and then if you really want to understand what is the candle body and the wick go back to the previous session um it was recorded and explained everything the body of the candle never crossed below the opening range low and then it went all the way up from whatever this point is 176 to 179 so in in one one two three four five days you would have made two one break even day two zero trade days and one two profit days right is there a loss day no not yet would there be a loss day absolutely yes there will be losses in using this strategy too let let's see what that looks like right so what is this date here so it is 12 13 right so where is 12 13 here okay so we open into 12 13 and then for spy the 100 is above 200 for apple 100 is above 200 i am bullish so if the price cuts above the opening range high i will take calls did it trade it did it cut the opening range high here no so what would what would the kgf say it will say listen to songs so you listen to songs or you just don't trade so it went down we will not even take a short position because the long term trend is bullish right so we will just listen to songs the whole day we will not do anything right now let's look at the next day uh, which is 1214 right 1214 to 1214 is here so now the trend changes now the trend changes so spy in the morning the 100 EMA goes below the 200 EMA, meaning the trend is bearish on the market and the trend is bullish on SPY. So you would have heard, you would have got listened to songs on Market Watch till this point, till 1040, you would have got listened to songs. You will not do anything, no matter what the market is doing, you will not do anything because you are getting two different signals market is saying it is bearish apple is saying it is bullish the stock is going down it's a mix and match it's like choppy like few people say though it is clearly going downside the long term trend did not establish itself we will wait till it establishes which is at around 10:40 and then we will see if the price is close to orb and then we will basically trade um, if the price is close to ORB, we can buy puts and see where it goes. On this case, if it was me, if I look at Apple on this day, I will not trade because the price is already far from ORB. There is no risk reward for me. If this candle was forming here, I would have to a trade. I don't care if it goes here, but I would have to a trade here because the SPY is in a bearish trend. Apple is in a bearish trend. The price is breaking the ORB and it is just breaking the ORB, so I have a good risk reward. So I would have took the trade on 14th if it was here, but since it was far, I would have not took a trade, right? So let's look at um, 15th, right? So 15th, this is 15th, so 15th. Okay, 15th, it is bearish. So the price is below, uh, the 100 is below the 200, on Apple, the 100 is below 200 on SPY. And then the price is basically breaking the opening range low. And then this is my stop loss. I would have traded, I would have traded, I would have traded. I think um, this is where the uh, Fed meeting has happened. Is it on 12.15? Let me see. I don't know, I think it's 12.15. 
and then it just uh, probably just broke high right so if i am still in the trade for example right so i entered the trade here i am still bearish right so i will exit here because it might it this is this is my stop loss right so i would have exited here so that's my stop loss and um let's look at the other day right so this is 15th this is 16th so this is 16th okay so to, on the 16th the, the trend changed again on spy it is uh, bullish 100 is above 200 on apple it is bullish 100 is above 200 but look the price did not cross the opening range high i will not buy calls just because the previous day it has rallied up i will not simply blindly buy calls though the trend is high i will not buy calls why because the price did not break the opening range high it is actually going down though the trend says it is actually um though the trend says it is actually bullish i will not buy calls right so if you if you look at all these stats here all these um, all these dates from beginning to end you know the last day which is the friday right so in the morning it is bullish on spy but apple it is bearish there is no trade no matter where the price cuts that means the market is choppy on friday as it was we all know on friday it was choppy so what does it help us do it helps us to stay away from fomo trades just because market went up on the previous day it doesn't mean it will just go up the next day it can like here it can go like here but then did it did the same happen here no so basically what it does is it puts us in a in a, in a position where you will only take a trade when the long term trend on the market and the long term trend on the spy accepts with the price action only then you will be able to trade that's it that's what kgf does is there's no rocket science in it all i did was i um, basically plotted it in a in a in a way where um, it it displays calls and puts in the watch list column now what 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 happened was like many people were reaching out to me and saying like hey you know what it's for the most part it's saying listen, listen to songs um you, like people want some action right like they want to do something even though they want to lose like they may lose some money but they want to get into action right so what i did was i released another version called um kg flight and what kg flight does is it does the same thing um except that it will not look at spy it will purely look at apple it will not look at the market condition or the market price action and then instead of 100 over 200 it will um, track 34 over 50 because it is a little aggressive uh, the time frame there is a high chance that we may get stopped out more often um but then you will have some um, you will have some kind of um, um action happening right so let's see what's happening here right so on this day the kgf flight is pretty straight pretty simple all it tracks is is the this is the 34 uh, let's see which one is 34 here this should be 34 the white one so 34 is the white one and the 50 is the red uh, line here all it checks is is the 34 above 50 is the price above or below uh, orb that's all it does that's why it's called the lighter version so it gives you um it checks the it checks less criteria it will not check the market strength it will not check um uh, the long term trend all it does it is it, it, it checks the short term trend right so let's see what it does here right we will go day by day i'm just looking at apple in the interest of time and um, we will look at uh, the trailing stop in a minute so on this day for example this is 12 6 um 34 is above 50 price is cutting the opening range high you would have got a signal as calls and the say uh, and, and the, throughout the day it was uh, traveling sideways 
So more or less, you would have probably be broke even or if theta is eating away your calls, you would have probably ended up with slight loss. You would have not took a stop loss because it never broke the opening range low on this day. So let's look at the other day. It's bullish, 34 is above 50, the price is above, you will enter a position and then it never broke the opening range low. So you would have traded it all the way till here if you entered here which probably would have broke even. So this day here, 34 is above 50, price is cutting it, the opening range high, you would have to calls here, KGF would have told you calls, you would enter, you would exit wherever you like um, on this chart. Now on this day, 34 is above 50, which means the trend is bullish, but then the price did not cross the opening range high, so you'd have got saved from buying calls on this day, even though we are just using KGF light. Um, and then here, 34 is above 50, you got a break here, uh, and then it traded all the way up till here on the day. So more or less, if you use KGF or KGF light, you'd have ended up with the similar trades for the most part. So 34 is above 50, it is a bullish, but it, it never crossed the high. So you would have not took a trade. Now today, on this day, you have a bearish signal um, on the trend. 34 is under 50 moving average. You have the price breaking, the candle is breaking the opening range low here. You, took a, you, you take a put position here. KGF light will say put puts um, next to Apple here and then you will take puts here and then you will wait till you know you are you, you you will just simply wait till you take your profits it never breached the stop loss and um you will trade like that so here this is where the 34 went under 50 um the stock is slightly away from the orb um i don't know if i will really take this trade here i don't i probably would have not took if I took a trade here, most more or less, I would have got stopped out here, right? Okay, so let's look at here. 34 is above 50. The price is breaking down. There is no trade till this point, but by then it's already far. So I'm not gonna take a trade here, right? So it's bearish. The price is acting up. We'll not take a trade. It moves sideways. So on 10 consecutive trading days, we would have probably took four um, actions or four trading days with either calls or puts. And for the most part, we would have been on the uh, profit side. And as you can see, there is a high probability that we can get stopped out as well. There's no guarantee that we will not get stopped out. I have been trading AMC, for example, using this. And uh, for the most part, it makes bigger moves. So when I have a bigger move, um, like this, see like here, I have a bearish trend here. When it breaks, I will enter. It never stopped out. It ended up here. Uh, 34, is, uh, 34 is under 50, it is bearish. It, it broke the opening range low here. Um, it went all the way here, right? And then see, this is like a super trade I did. So 34 is under 50, the range is breaking here. It went all the way here. If I'm not wrong, I think this is the date it went down 15% or something. And then here I don't have a trade because 34 is under 50, but the price is breaking up. I would have not took a trade here because the trend is, um, the long-term trend is showing it's bearish, but the price action is telling it's bullish, right? So here, I think uh, somewhere around here, the price is bre basically breaking up. Um, 34 is above 50, and then you would have took um, it is a 25% move day on uh, Friday here, right? So this is how you would have traded. So there is one quick tip that I can give you guys is for a trailing stop loss, I always use either 20 or 21 moving average. They're both same. I just happen to use 21 just because I just like 21. So this is how I usually trade uh, when the price is breaking. For example, if you look at this, um, 34 is under 50. So the trend is bearish, price is cutting below. So I will enter a trade here and then I will exit my trade here. 
I will not exit anywhere else. I will only exit my trade when the price cuts above 20. So 20 moving average is my stop loss, right? And then if I am trading on this day, I would have uh, took a position here and then it did not cut across the uh, 20 moving average till here, right? So if you look at here, I would have took a position somewhere here and it, it stopped me out, I think somewhere here on uh, Friday, right? So this, this is pretty much my setup. So I basically use opening range break and then um, three moving averages, two for the trend, one for my trailing stop loss. The 20 exponential moving average is, this, is the trailing stop loss. And I tried to add um, this 21 moving average as well in the KGF original version, but then you would get very few signals if I add that as well. So I thought like, okay, so let me, you know, just let me make it um, until where it is needed, right? So this is, in a nutshell is what KGF does. For the most part, I don't know about the profits. For the most part, you would not make terrible mistakes or you will not trade counter trend, right? So that's the whole objective of, the, of KGF, right? For, for us to be able to see the market trend, the stock trend and the stock price action in one single field, so we don't have to have like, you know, uh, let me see, I, I have many grids here. Let me see which one. Uh, see, this is how I used to trade in the past. I really traded like this. And there were days when I traded like this and um, I don't think it makes any sense. I also used to have a, another screen with SPY and some other market indices. I don't think it should be that complex. And I don't think I, I though I made some money, but I don't think I, I enjoyed trading this way, right? Like having eight screens here and, you know. Um, so I don't think I, I like that, that way anymore. So for the most part, I think um, I will probably just, um, you know, trade the way that I just uh, showed you guys. So that in a nutshell is how you plot and how you use KGF and KGF Lite. Um, KGF and KGF Lite are pretty similar from a trend tracking standpoint. KGF will, will track SPY, KGF Lite will not track SPY, right? So that, that in a nutshell is how we use um, market watch and uh, watch lists and you customize here and then you type custom, you, you click on one of these guys here and then you basically copy paste KGF, you move it here and then you get it here. So you plot it and then boom, you don't have to do anything. It will do automatic. Just make sure the time frame um, on KGF is five minutes and, and uncheck extended hours. That, that way it's uh, more accurate. Um, so that, that, that's it, that's it guys. Um, and uh, I think I'm at 45 minutes, 40 minutes into the session. So I think we can open for any questions. Oh, by the way, um, I do not trade anything with less ADR, which is for a different day. I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about ADR in this session because that today's session is purely for KGF. So, for example, I will not trade. I will not trade Apple ever, never, never. I will not trade Apple, like like how I showed you. I will not trade Apple at all. I will trade AMC and Lucid. That's just my trading style because it has a range of 12% up or down. So when things move up or down, why trade a 2% stock? Why not just trade a 12% or 11% stock? So um, there are like, I think uh, we shared ADR many times. Uh, so here is ADR, ATR. So here you can actually look at the ADR, ATR um, on a daily chart. If you go to Apple, you can, um, basically look at AMD, this is AMD, right? So if I go to Apple, it says 2%, right? I mean, why will I trade anything that just moves 2% a day? Um, though it is highly liquid, I don't know. I will, maybe I'll just trade AMC or Lucid or, you know, DKNG or something like that. It's just my, it's just my style. You don't have to follow my style, but you know, that's, that's just how I trade, right? I just purely trade high ADR, 
high dollar volume and then you know i have some other like relative volume i do check relative volume look at amc on friday it has a relative volume of 3.4 percent 3.4 times so i check few things that makes sense to me doesn't mean you have to do the same um you can trade as you wish but kgf in general will work on all stocks so there is uh, no bias on anything but i just happen to like uh, high adf stocks let's look at some questions in the chat here I could not see the screen on Think or Swim. You should be able to see the screen on Think or Swim. How you decide ORB range as 90, 930 to 935 on what basis? Arun E, you're asking on what basis I'm picking 930 to 935 just purely on my experience in the past. And um, same question, how do we decide ORB? Yes, um, 930 to 935, happen to work for me. And I'll tell you why it is working for me, for example, right? So let's look at AMC and let's look at five day, five minute chart. I will plot ORB and um, let's see why I say it works for me because I trade highly volatile stocks. Uh, no, and no, I'll, I'll tell you why it works, right? I don't think I saved it. Yeah, I did not save. 935. So why it works for me personally is because a stock like AMC will make big moves in the first 30 minutes already. So what am I gonna trade after 30 minutes? If you look at here, by 10 o'clock, like 60% of the move is done. What am I going to trade this from here to here? Why? When I can trade from here to here. For me personally, I like trading five minutes because the stocks that I trade are highly volatile. So that's why I pick uh, five minutes. No other reason. You can trade uh, 30 minutes. You can just go to edit studies, click here. You can um, change it from uh, 935 to 1000. You'll get, oh, maybe it, it, this, well, maybe this is the, um, range here. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So from, yeah. So first 30 minutes is here. Maybe, yeah, not a bad move uh, to trade from here to here too. But then, you know what? I just like um, uh, five minute because in, on this day, I would have entered the position here rather than here. Right. And then instead of grabbing this move, I would have grabbed all this move. So my personal choice, that's all, nothing much, just my, based on my experience. Is this steady good for only S&P 500 stocks? Uh, well, we are using, um, so I'll uh, just move this chat here so you all can see. Um, is this steady good for only S&P 500 stocks as we use S&P 500 uh, as reference? No, we can use it for anything. For the most part, when SPY is trending up or down, um, it may take um, for the whole market up or down. For the most part, uh, it works good probably for the stocks that are um, within a spy. It doesn't mean it will not work for other stocks. Um, for the most part, most stocks follow spy, right? For example, um, I don't think AMC is part of spy, but then um, I think it made a move when spy made a move um, on the other day, right? So so yeah, you can, it, this, is, uh, this works good for any stocks. So let me see. How do we know the call price target? You don't have a price target. You follow the 20 exponential moving average. There are no price targets. When this is trend trading, this is not, this is momentum trading. This is not price target support resistance trading. What I'm sharing this, this strategy, this is trend trading. So you will go where the trend takes you to, right? Um, so yeah, there are no price targets. You just follow along the 20 exponential moving average. ORB is first five minute candle range low and high. That's true. Do you use 34 and 50 EMEA on all stocks on only volatile? See, um, I use 34, 50, um, and I also use 100 and 200 based on the, the, the trend, right? Like for example, if the trend is very quick on a stock, for example, AMC can just flip up or down very quick. So it's, it's like you said, it's good to use the shorter EMA on volatile stocks um, than the longer ones, but it has both pros and cons. You just need to know what kind of trader you are and how much risk you can take if you wanna use a short EMA. 
So that looks like me. Do you use pre post market hours on chat or just market hours? So I, um, I like, um, I like using, um, just, I like trading without extended hours. Uh, just my personal preference. I look at pre-market, post-market, but I just uh, don't trade based on those um, like pre pre-market, pre post-market. How to estimate the premium at stop loss? I did not understand this question. So you enter when the stop is stock is breaking here, for example, and then uh, you plot uh, exponential moving average, and um, you make it twenty. And uh, yeah, I can keep that color. Yeah, you just uh, enter here, whatever is the premium, and then uh, you exit here, whatever is the premium. So let's see. Uh, is EMA better than moving average based on your experience? I'm not following this question. Um, EMA, the MA stands for moving average. E is exponential. There is one more moving average that's called simple moving average. That's um, um, that, that that's slightly slow in my opinion. So if you want to really trade volatile stocks on a short time frame, I think EMA is good. Um, on my daily charts, I will um, look at simple moving averages. On my five minute charts and hourly charts, I use exponential moving average. Both are moving averages, uh, simple exponential. There are other moving averages like hull moving average and a um, couple of other moving averages that I couldn't recall now. But yes, I use uh, exponential moving average for short term. Is it possible to have KGF signals for long calls or swing calls which are out? Well, KGF is short term. Just because ORB is purely intraday, um, purely intraday i i this is short term only i don't think we can use kgf for um, swing calls there is something that i'm working on uh, for swing calls to give you an indicator like that it will not be named as kgf it will be something else but then yeah i'll uh, probably work i'm actually already working on something for swing but then um, uh, yeah it will be a different indicator there or watch list column how are using KGF for 8.30 to 8.35 and KGF light? You can mix and match if you want. There is no hard rule where you wanna use KGF between one time and you know light for other time. That's not a bad idea, right? Like uh, you can probably use it in two different times. Um, how did you back test? I looked at hundreds, probably hundreds and under thousand, maybe like five, somewhere around 500, 600 charts manually and then um, i did on demand like you have a feature on uh, think or swim on demand you can go back to any particular date time frame so i just went back picked the random dates um, outside of the market crash on uh, march 2020 i randomly did some uh, on demand looked at charts and then um, back tested to to validate what i'm looking is good what is the base of selling stocks? Do you consider opening volume gap up? So um, for this, I have um, I'm working on some scanners where where I track the ADR, momentum, dollar volume, and um, gap ups, gap downs, like you said. And then I mainly mainly pick um, based on uh, the yearly charts. Uh, here I can show you uh, quickly. So I look at the daily chart one year one day and then i look at the 20 uh, day one hour chart and then i take my decisions uh, based on this um, based on the adr and few other things right see i have an adr here it's 12 percent, so this is my stock and i also look at the the chart pattern how it looks like um, these are the simple moving averages here these are the this is an exponential moving average here so i basically look at the patterns and see how the price action is behaving near the moving averages and then i um, basically trade uh, those stocks for the most part i think i'll have uh, you know similar patterns some comments for pretty much all the stocks that you see so i spend like many many hours to you know pick the stocks um so yeah, I look at the volume, I look at the dollar volume, I look at the ADR, I look at the daily charts, I look at the gap ups, gap downs. I also look if the gap up and gap down is above the volume profile, below the volume profile. I, I do a lot of analysis while before I pick a stock. 
when you mention five minute do you mean one day five day one year five minute it's all same what matters is the five minutes five day five minute uh, one day five minute five day five minute and one year five minute should give you the same exponential moving average cross and the same candlestick so it, it's all same i personally use uh, five day five minutes just because i can see what happened the day before i also occasionally use 10 day five minutes um if i want to look at a um, bigger picture so i'm new i'm not able to see the adr and rva on list columns it's uh, there in the group chat kishore um once this session is done um i will paste these um uh, this, this uh, code again in the chat so anyone who's attending this session can use both kgf and kgf lite as you wish how you will choose out of 10 stocks in kgf i will not have 10 stocks let me show where is my watch list is the watch list i showed something back yeah i will not have 10 stocks you know what i traded on friday i don't trade spy on day to day i only have two stocks that that's that's where that's what helps us i will only have either one or two or maybe if i'm working on a weekend to list a list of stocks for the next week i will maybe have five but then at the beginning of the day i know exactly which stocks to look at i will not have 10 stocks that that doesn't work for me because i there's no way i can trade all 10 stocks if all 10 stocks give me calls i cannot buy all calls on all 10 and also manage those positions not possible for me so i will not have 10 stocks i don't have to hope you will share the scripts kg flights and this session recording yes it will be shared thank you for posting it later okay so can you explain those clouds on that chat also could you please share how to get adr and other labels adr is already in the in the options group and i will see if i can post it again in the chat after the session in in the group chat there in uh, things have your options group and uh, the stocks group um the clouds right the clouds so let's look at the clouds this is not this is not a cloud uh well this actually is a cloud actually so it's it's an indicator that i have like it's a simple cloud i also have the ripster cloud so basically what it does is it's nothing it's just a simple moving average of 100 over 200 it will just fill the gap between the 100 and 200 with the color so i clearly see what it is because on this chart i also have one more cloud this is a bollinger band uh, so this is the 20 moving average and this is the two standard deviation here so i just had a color plotted on these two standard deviations so since i have one color i just thought like you know i will just have another color so it grabs my attention so if you want i think i shared ripster cloud in the chat um yesterday if i'm not wrong so search for ripster cloud you should find it if not i can share it again um, so you can have the cloud the cloud is nothing but the color between two moving averages in short but i will also share the indicator there how to choose a stock to trade on the day um like i said uh, on sundays or saturdays i will sit and i will look at maybe 100 to 200 charts and i will pick probably five stocks out of them and then by monday morning based on the pre market action i will just remove um everything and probably have one or two so i can focus on them it's okay if i do not have a trade on those two stocks it's not that i have to trade every single day so i will uh, trade on high probability stocks so um it's a big session right it's a it's a big theory on how i pick my stocks i don't think i can explain it today but then let's see we can have another session for another day to see how i can uh, how i pick my stocks but then yeah i do a lot of groundwork what is the value you take for adr what do you mean what is the value like um like greater yeah i like um stocks greater than 6 7 i mean i would love to trade stocks that are above 10 but then yeah 6 or 7 is ideal for me adr number uh so we are above the time so i will take five more minutes because we started at 105 um so we will we i will take um um 
questions till 205 and then we will close sharp by 205 so we respect everyone's time here um okay where are we yeah so here we are so what are your next week five or whatever number or shortlisted stock curious to do I will post, uh, Srikant, I will post those uh, stocks in the group chat. I haven't, um, I haven't uh, gone through the charts for the, for the next week yet, but I'm pretty sure I will most likely trade AMC and Lucid for the most part. I, um, I think I love the way that Lucid is set. So it's at uh, 50 exponent, 50 simple moving average here. It's actually raising here. Um, so I like the way it's actually holding uh, the 50 moving average here. So maybe I'll try Lucid. I'll uh, probably, I'm, maybe I'm slightly uh, lean toward Lucid than AMC, but um, it all depends. I have to look at charts. I cannot tell you what I'm going to look at yet, but as I find, I may just uh, post it in the chat there. You play trailing stop loss or main, manually observe, manually observe 20 exponential moving average. There is a way in Think or Swim where we can auto set some rules. Um, where we can just set a trailing stop. But as of now, I'm just uh, manually observing 20 moving average. How to get volume overlap with the chart? Okay, so if you want a volume overlap on the chart, so what you do is um, you go to settings, you go to equities, so show volume subgraph, and then you go here and then overlap volume here under general overlap volume, and then you will get this overlap volume here. That's how you get it. When share the KGF script as a notepad file and not paste it in the chat, thank you. Okay, we'll try to do that. Neo, well, let's just see Neo quickly, right? Uh, we got three more minutes, guys. Okay, what's the area? Seven, not bad. It is under the volume profile here, not a bad setup. I'm uh, probably bearish on this. So if um, um, if Neo is coming under the 20 exponential moving average, let's see, maybe I did it as simple. Um, yeah, so if, if, if Neo is under the 20 exponential moving average on an hourly chart, I may be interested in shorting that position. I'm not, I'm, I may not just uh, buy calls on Neo. I don't care if it goes from 20 to 100, the next day I decide that it's just not the way that I like it. I think it's more bearish just by looking at it, but then I want the price to close under the 20 exponential moving average on um, the one hour chart. That's when I, I will uh, look at NEO. Um, can you show how to choose a stop loss from your charts that you show? Do you add an alert when? No, I do not have an alert. Um, what I do is um, uh, I will sit in front of my system and then I will see if it is cutting the 20 moving average or not. Here it has uh, breached the 20 moving average. So I would have exited the trade if I was in this long position here. I don't care if it crosses here and goes up, but then I will just uh, promptly exit my position here on this candle. That's how I trade. Doesn't mean it's right. Uh, yeah, I have to manually do it, unfortunately. How to decide when to buy a particular stock? That's the point of the whole session, Wamshi. That's that's what KGF tells you. Um, it tells you um, exit, entry or exit. Um, if you're asking when to enter, you, you should enter close to ORB high or low on the day. If uh, KGF is telling you to buy calls somewhere here, it's far away from ORB, so I wouldn't buy it because it already made a big move. So, so there is a reason why we have ADR. Um, if a stock has an ADR of let's say seven, um, it's more or less gonna trade seven percent up or down, maybe a two percent here and there. So that's the range, right? Um, so you you gotta understand how much percentage the stock has moved already and then trade accordingly. Just don't simply buy stocks just because KGF told. What is the success, success rate of this strategy? Um, I don't have an exact number on this uh, Himanshu, but from what I've been uh, monitoring, it, it's pretty good. Um, 
it's pretty good for the most part it um, keeps you stay away from the choppy sessions and um, i can say most likely 90% of the time you will not enter into a wrong trade so um so it's all up to you on which stock you pick so your um, profit ratio will be high kf should also work uh, for stocks and not just uh, stocks uh, yeah i don't know what you're taking talking there but yeah it should work for stocks and um, options i will try to develop strategy to get pls yeah that's fine cool munish how you manage your day job with kgf that's a million dollar question i don't think i can answer it now um but since i only have two stocks that i actively monitor it's uh, pretty easy for me i don't track 100 stocks option uh, is success and then i will share thank you munish and uh, thank you everyone for all your questions and um joining the session today um uh, we will have uh, more sessions like this uh, starting next year so we will cover more topics if you are interested in any particular topic uh, feel free to post it in the group chat so we can take them into consideration for the next sessions um for now thank you so much happy holidays and uh, happy trading thank you all yeah. over to you dana yeah thank you divet uh, for uh, taking the session and also you know um, going through all the questions etc you can hear me correct can you hear me hello yeah looks like do you hit yeah so yeah one thing is uh, so oh, debate went to mute let me give me a chance yeah so <laughs> i thought you left already you are so quick <laughs> but cool uh, i mean through chat i got to know that yeah they were able to hear um yeah thank you debate and also whoever joined you know we are all starting somewhere uh, i i believe many are new or le- trying to learn or achieve success and it is possible let me give quick uh, note about deviate he knows nothing 6 months back if i'm not wrong and uh, sorry to put uh, on that context but uh, hard work and something he got his own ways today right and as he keeps on looking at it he can improvise the strategy you know remove some strategies that's how exactly we all have to do this is a probability game and we all know that and um, i don't want to take any of your time longer but one request if you really like the session if you think we are, we've been doing good and we can improve on this as a newcomers or you know who has passion we are trying to learn all that uh, please do have some comments that way it inspires for whoever took session to continue to do more with motivation because when it says uh, when when we say okay it helped someone definitely it pumps our spirit no doubt about it so take some time instead of chart here take some time to post it in the group that way you know others also get motivated thinking wow something i missed which deviate has shared today let me learn it is both way benefit so i hope you take a thought uh, there for a minute and uh, definitely do that that way it's helpful for uh, who did the session to pump his spirit and also to people who missed it to know more and they can improve their investment strategies just a polite request yeah uh, uh, hope to see some comments and uh, thank you guys happy weekend we will continue to do that and achieve more <clears throat> yeah thank you dvet everyone uh, bye